Since the first shoe greeted the first sunrise with the first song, the peoples of the Housie Prairie have spoken of a dark and sinister jungle to the north. It encompasses the windward side of the Silverback Mountains. Although most of the prolific rains in the region fall and flow down the eastern side, the peoples who reside in these mountains do not descend into the verdant rainforest below. They would rather starve or die of thirst than risk a cup of lowland river water or a single bite of fruit. They call this jungle the Ushalek. Hungry roots make the bones crawl. Or simplified in the common tongue, forest of bones. Chimere is a distant planet. It is defined by waves of life brought from Earth and set free to evolve independently in this new context. The indigenous life of the planet, swarms of microbes called magic by the people who live there, are what harvest Earth organisms and make copies on Chimere. The Great Portal is the most famous of Chimere's great hives of indigenous magic, but it is hardly the only conglomerate of its kind. Although its origins remain unknown, with some thinking the enchanted forest is comprised of feral magic once domesticated by the first children, others asserting that it is as ancient as the portal which brought the trees that now make up its great garden, and more still saying that it is an elder god of the jungle, the Ushalek is undoubtedly the most powerful hive of indigenous Chimeran magic aside from the great portal thus far encountered by scholars of the great library. The Ushalek detests fauna and will slay any being, demon, or beast that intrudes upon its domain. While it had been known since the earliest records, indeed the oldest rock art on the prairie predating the shoe includes Ushalek trees alongside other dangers of the north, like skin-changing witches, Uktan and other beasts. Little is truly known for certain about the Forest of Bones. The exterior of the forest is lined with bones jutting from bark and root. As trees are well known to consume bones, the fact that these are retained in a display could only sensibly deter intruders of significant intelligence lends credence to the proposal that this forest is in some way connected to the first children. Proponents of its more ancient origins suggest that this may have been in response to fending off the first children who sought to harvest and understand this eldritch being. Regardless, it holds particular hostility towards people, and skulls of intruders are often given prime visibility to the exterior of the forest. Deeper within the shadows, the true wonders of this forest are hard at work. There are no true megafauna. However, many reports include sightings of beings and beasts meandering the shadows. Herbivores Herbivorous fauna may cause damage to foliage, but they provide dispersal of seeds, their movement churns the soil, and their dung of megafauna fertilizes. Although the Ushalek seems to have long ago decided that it will not tolerate animals, especially large fauna, it has clearly recognized their value and has gone through great lengths to create their own that are under their control. These beings are the guardians and gardeners of the enchanted forest. It appears that the first step is for fungal spores or the magic itself to take command of the motor function of the animal as they enter the forest. As the body starves and eventually dies, its body over time replaces itself with floral cells which replicate the morphology of the animal, often in the form of making floral musculature over a often in the form of making floral musculature over a skeletal frame. These floral beasts tend to the Ushalek, churning the soil, dispersing felled trees to make space for new growth, and defending it from intruders. There have been many great herbivores that do intrude, and despite the power of titans, Hukogor Sloth, and Kotar Drakes, 
It seems the forest has created monsters of sufficient size to vanquish these beasts, adding their meat to the soil and their bones to frame more defenses. No creature that enters the forest is safe. People are, of course, no exception. Many explorers have ventured in to this discover the secrets of the enchanted forest. Most do not return. Those who do escape often do so with pieces of their body spreading with a floral infection. The process of infection is slow in these cases, sometimes taking years to become fatal, whereas within the forest, the infection can take minutes. There is much speculation as to why, with the leading theory being that the magic is more potent within the forest itself. Thus far, no one has found a cure short of amputation, and even that is often too late, as the blood cells have begun to be replicated as plant cells. It is believed that these escapees are allowed to leave in an effort to warn against large-scale incursion, as the forest appears smart enough to know that slaughter will not deter a curious mind. This could also be the reason for the delayed infection of those who escape. Death has been the ultimate end of every documented case, so the slow infection is not meant to spare the host. In fact, it is uncomfortable in the best of cases, and chronic agony in the worst. And if there is truly sentience among the forest, as many speculate, this implies a malevolence in the slow infection hoping to warn off future exploration. There are accounts from the Age of Witches of powerful sorcerers seeking to either tap into the power of the Ushalek or even outright control it. These stories are all cautionary tales of hubris. None were successful. The Age of Witches was between six and 4,000 years ago, and the following Dark Ages saw minimal records, so it is unknown if these are more than fairy tales. Some may be rooted in truth, and a few survivors have reported beings of visceral power present in the wood, mostly or entirely overtaken by plants, and commanding them in human voices not to return. The tone is described as much of a plea as an order. Despite these warnings, the Great Library still finances expeditions in an effort to understand this mighty source of magic, the greatest in Chimer save for the portal which has reshaped the planet. The success of these expeditions is not known to the general public, but given their continued support, it's reasonable to assume that they have discovered some tangible information about it. Perhaps due to the dangerous nature, they have not divulged their findings, but this is not unusual for the Great Library to classify information they deem unfit for public access. Although there are more rumors and myths than known truths of the Ushalek, this enchanted forest is perhaps the most famous example of the eldritch dangers which define the realms beyond the known world. A forest bereft of beasts, which marks its borders with blood and bone. It inspires most to remain on the map, but to those audacious and ambitious few, tales of the Ushalek and other wonders both thrilling and terrible call them to adventure. Happy Halloween! Cheers to Stonebone for sponsoring this special episode. I've mentioned the Haunted Forest a few times on social media posts, but wasn't planning on really unpacking it anytime soon. So when they proposed it as a topic, I immediately got excited. Making art for this was a ton of fun, quite different from my usual subjects, but after devoting the past few months to my anthology, it was a lot of fun to dive into basically an entirely new project in the creature designs. As of recording this, my second anthology, Songs of the Inland Sea, is not yet finalized, so I can't give a confirmed re so I cannot give a confirmed release date. Thank you all for your patience on the matter. Studying for a nautical anthology was a ton of fun, as was the writing itself, and I'm unspeakably excited to share it with all of you. My next episode will be on the non-human apes of the known world, 
and I'll have some anthology promotion episodes spread throughout the next month or so. Thank you all so much for watching, and to my Patreon patrons for your continued support. Stay fantastic, you wonderful people. Cheers, folks!